This is Lesson 28 of our Calculus 2 series, Rotated Conics. In Lesson 27, all of the parabolas we discussed had a directrix that was horizontal or vertical. But this curve still fits the definition of a parabola. Similarly, the ellipses and hyperbolas we've discussed have all had foci or vertices that lie on a horizontal or vertical line but these curves still fit the definition of an ellipse and a hyperbola. And so we recognize these as rotations of the conics we've studied so far. For example, the rotated parabola we just saw above can be recognized as a rotation. We start with this parabola in the xy plane and rotate the axis system by about 63 degrees here to get that rotated parabola. And I'm going to show this computation in a few minutes, the theta equals 63 degrees. But notice that when we make this rotation, we get a new axis system, and we're calling that the x-hat, y-hat axis system. So the x-axis rotates to become the x-hat axis, and the y-axis rotates to become the y-hat axis. And now notice that in this new axis system, the parabola will have a directrix parallel to the x-hat axis. So all the work we had in Lesson 27 can apply to this parabola if we change to the x-hat, y-hat axis system. So when studying rotated conics, we're interested in knowing how to recognize the equation of a rotated conic section as we see it in x-y form. We want to know how to find the angle of rotation, theta, and we want to know how to go between xy and x hat y hat coordinates. So let's start with the answer to number three, how to change between the coordinate systems. If a rectangular xy coordinate system is rotated through an angle of theta to form the x hat y hat coordinate system, then a point xy will have coordinates x hat y hat in the new system where x is equal to x hat cosine theta minus y hat sine theta, y is equal to x hat sine theta plus y hat cosine theta, and x hat is equal to x cosine theta plus y sine theta, and y hat is equal to negative x sine theta plus y cosine theta. So here we have the relationships between x y and x hat y hat coordinates. I'm not going to go through the derivation of these equations, but it comes from the setup here. We have a point in the plane that we could call x, y, or x hat, y hat, where x hat and y hat are the rotated axes rotated through an angle of theta. By using this other angle phi and r with the x, y, x hat, and y hat distances, we can solve for these equations. And so now when we see the equation of a rotated conic section, how can we recognize it? What is it going to look like? Well, remember that in Lesson 27, all of the conics had the form ax squared plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f is equal to zero. And we saw that the product ac being positive gave an ellipse, being negative gave a hyperbola, and being equal to zero gave a parabola. You might have noticed that there is no b here, and we purposely left that out because the rotated conics in xy form have a bxy term here. So equations of this form are going to be rotated conic sections. And now instead of just looking at the product ac, we need to take a look at b squared minus 4ac. And if that's negative, we're going to have an ellipse, positive, a hyperbola, and equal to zero, we'll have a parabola. And again, we're not including the degenerate cases that we saw in Lesson 27. And so if this is the equation of a rotated conic in xy form, we realize that when we translate this equation to x hat y hat coordinates, the b term, the coefficient of x hat y hat, is then going to be zero. And so making that change of coordinates and setting the coefficient of x hat y hat equal to zero gives us that cotan of 2 theta is equal to a minus c over b where theta is the angle of rotation, and we're going to consider theta between 0 and pi over 2. And so this answers the second question we had above as to how to find the angle of rotation. 
So for example, x squared plus 4xy plus 4y squared plus 7x minus 6y equals 5. Because we have a non-zero xy term here, we recognize that this conic section is a rotated conic. And so we have a is equal to 1, b is equal to 4, c is equal to 4. b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, and that does match up what we had above for parabolas. So without even looking at the graph, we realize that this is a rotated parabola. And for the angle of rotation, we solve cotan of 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 4 over 4. That's A minus C over B. And since we're more comfortable with our tangent values than we are with our cotan values, I like to take the reciprocal here. And so we have tan of 2 theta is equal to negative 4 thirds. And so 2 theta is the arctan of negative 4 thirds, and theta is 1 half the arctan of negative 4 thirds. Now when we make this computation, we end up with an angle that's approximately negative 26.6 degrees. But notice that we were looking for a theta value between 0 and pi over 2 for this rotation. We're not looking for a downward rotation. To keep things consistent, we want to always rotate between 0 and pi over 2. So instead of making a downward rotation of 26.6 degrees, we want to add 90 degrees to that and make an upward rotation of 63.4 degrees. And so what we have here Instead of recognizing this as a negative 27 degree rotation, we want to recognize it as a positive 63 degree rotation. And so our angle of rotation then, we'll say, is approximately 63 degrees. The ellipse we saw above, the rotated ellipse, has equation 4x squared plus 2 radical 3xy plus 2y squared plus 10 radical 3x plus 10y minus 5 is equal to 0. So here we have a is equal to 4, b is 2 radical 3, c is equal to 2, and so b squared minus 4ac is negative and that gives us a rotated ellipse. And setting cotan of 2 theta equal to a minus c over b gives us 4 minus 2 over 2 radical 3. That simplifies to 1 over radical 3 for cotan of 2 theta. So again, we take the reciprocal. That tells us tan of 2 theta is equal to radical 3. So 2 theta equals pi over 3, and so theta is equal to pi over 6. And so that's a pi over 6 rotation that we have here. Let's take a look at one more example. Determine the type of conic and find the angle of rotation. And typically this is the kind of problem that you would see on your final exam. So please pause the video and work on this. Here we recognize that a is equal to 1, b is equal to 4, and c is equal to 1. And also keep in mind, in case you're given this equation out of order, make sure you have it in the proper order. You want a to be the coefficient of x squared, b to be the coefficient of xy, and c to be the coefficient of y squared. And so here we have b squared minus 4ac is equal to 16 minus 4 times 1 times 1, so that's a positive number, and so we have a hyperbola. And cotan of 2 theta is equal to a minus c over b, so we have 1 minus 1 over 4, which says cotan of 2 theta is equal to 0. Well, if the cotan value is equal to 0, remember that cotan is cosine over sine. So this tells us the numerator is equal to 0, which means cosine of 2 theta is equal to 0. So 2 theta is equal to pi over 2, and theta is equal to pi over 4. Remember that we're looking for a solution between 0 and pi over 2. And so theta equals pi over 4 as our solution, and that is the angle through which we rotate to get our rotated hyperbola. And this concludes our lesson on rotated conics and concludes our Calculus 2 series. Good luck on your final exam.